Hello, this is the Unit 3 uh, portfolio for geometry. Uh, Unit 3 is just the portfolio. They've done that with the portfolio lessons in this course. They're separate units, so it's just two lessons. Uh, I will demonstrate and talk about the portfolio. You will need a compass. If you don't have a compass, please go and get one and and do this with a compass. You will not receive a good score unless it is done with a compass. Uh, that said, if you absolutely cannot get a compass, you can use maths, uh, the math site in the UK, which has a compass tool. I will and ask me for the URL and I'll give it to you. Okay, but the topic is inscribing. inscribing polygons in circles. Okay, so here's the task. We have a circle. So you start with a circle. Start with a circle. Start with a circle. Okay, and note that I'm indicating a dot for the center point here of the circle. And we inscribe a polygon in a circle by making sure that all the vertices are on the circle. So if I pick four points on the circle and connect all four points, I have inscribed a polygon, in this case a quadrilateral, in a circle. And one of the things a geometrist will study is what are the properties, perhaps, of such a polygon that has been inscribed in a circle. But what we're going to do, actually, is inscribe, a, inscribe regular polygons in a circle. Regular. Okay. Regular it has a specific meaning here. It doesn't mean ordinary. It means repeated. Right? Regular. Uh, the train schedule is regular. That means it comes every half hour, every hour. Regular. And in the case of polygons, it means all angles and all sides are congruent. All angles and all sides are congruent. And so the regular polygons are an equilateral triangle which all the sides are congruent, a square in which all the sides are congruent and all the angles are 90 degrees. We're not going to do a pentagon. That's actually not a simple task to inscribe a pentagon in a circle. We are going to do a regular hexagon in which all the sides are congruent and all the angles are congruent. Okay? All right. So that said, let's get down to business. Get down to business. Get down to business. Get down, you dirty creature. All right. And here we go. Got a circle. I'm going to put a point on my page to represent the center where I'm going to put the compass point. Okay. And I'm going to draw a circle. I mean, draw a circle. And uh, I'm going to use my straight edge to draw a diameter. Okay, I'm going to line up my, my straight edge with the center of the circle so that it goes right through the middle. Right through the middle. There we go. Okay. All right. And you'll notice it intersects the circle in two places. Okay. I'm going to label those points A and B just so that I can refer to them. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my compass or cake my compass. And I'm going to put it on A, but I'm going to expand the compass a little bit so that it reaches beyond the middle of the circle. And I'm going to draw a circular arc from point A. Then I'm going to keep my compass the same size, and I'm going to repeat that process from point B. And it creates kind of a football or fist shape in the middle, or a cat eye, right? And now I'm going to take my straight edge, stake my trade edge, and I'm going to 
line it up on the two intersection points, creating a perpendicular line. Perpendicular is one of your vocabulary words. Note my perpendicular line intersects at two places. I'm going to label them C and D. And now I'm going to connect points A, B, C, and D, or A, D, B, and C, to form a polygon, in, the, a, in more particular, a quadrilateral in the polygon. And I'm going to argue that this quadrilateral is a square. It is a square. We don't have, at this point in the course, enough knowledge to prove that it is, but I can demonstrate that it is. Okay. And the way we do that is by this argument. A polygon, a quadrilateral with diagonals that are perpendicular, and they're perpendicular because we constructed it with a perpendicular construction, and that they are congruent. Now this goes through the center of the circle. So this is the radius of the circle. This is the radius of the circle. This is the radius. This is the radius. Two radiuses is, is a diameter, and both diagonals are a diameter. So both diagonals are congruent, and they're perpendicular. Therefore, it is a square. And all four sides are congruent, and all four angles are congruent and happen to be 90 degrees. You can check it out on your own using your protractor to measure the, measure the angles and verify that they are 90 degrees. Okay, So your task is to construct this quadrilateral, in, inscribed in a square, and then answer a few questions about it. Okay, Let's go on here, and let's do another construction. This one's kind of surprising and kind of fun. Uh, and it's often one of the first constructions students naturally do when they're given a compass to play with. Okay. And we're going to draw a circle. Sraw Durkle! All right there, right? Thight rare. All right, whoop. Got to make sure the center is right. Okay, here we go. All right. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to put a mark anywhere I like on the edge of the circle as a starting point. This is a point on the circle. Technically, the center of the circle is not part of the circle. It is the point from which all, all points on the circle are equidistant from, but it is not part of the circle. Okay, uh, But we, so if I want to be on the circle, I'm actually on the edge, what we think of as the edge. I'm going to keep my compass the same size it was when I drew the circle. And this is really important. Keep your compass the same size and draw an equal radius, but marking where it crosses the circle. And I'm going to do above and below, because I find that the more I multiply error, the bigger the error gets. So I want to minimize the number of steps around the circle. I could theoretically go just in order around, but I'm going to go equally from both sides. And this last one, I'm going to mark from both sides here just to kind of average between the two. It should, if you draw it nice, super accurate, it should end up, and I always end up a little, with a little bit of overlap, and it should end up that both marks end up at the same place. Okay, You should be able to mark an equal six intervals all the way, six radiuses all the way around the circle. Okay, All right, and now I'm going to take my ruler, rake my tooler, and I'm going to connect all six dots. Connect all six dots. Okay, one. Paying attention to precision as you go. One of the things we want to remind ourselves about when doing constructions is that we always leave the compass marks in place. Do not erase compass or ruler marks because half of what you are doing in a, in a construction is demonstrating your, sh your steps because your steps determine whether the validity of your construction. 
okay, we need to be able to mathematically prove that what you constructed is what you say it is. This is a hexagon inscribed in a circle. And it's a regular hexagon because all the sides are equal and all the angles are congruent. All the sides are congruent, all the angles are congruent. Okay, regular hexagon inscribed in a, cir in a circle. Okay, now one of the tasks that you are asked to do is, is draw the diameters. So I'm going to draw the diameters that connect the opposite vertices. Okay, you'll note that there are three diameters or six radiuses or radii. Okay. And it does ask, how do you know this is a regular hexagon? How do you know all the, all the sides of the same length? And the answer to that question is this. Note that all of these lengths were drawn with the same compass setting. All of them were drawn with the same compass setting. So this is a radius, 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 this is, this is a radius, 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 and this is a radius. So you've got six equilateral triangles, and this is a regular hexagon because all the sides are the same length. We haven't verified that all the angles are the same, but it can be, you can logically think, the angles in an equilateral triangle are all congruent. So all three angles are congruent. All three angles are congruent. All three angles are congruent. All three angles are congruent and so on, okay? And so each angle, interior angle formed by the hexagon is two angles of an equilateral triangle, which by the way, if you happen to know this, this is 60 degrees for an equilateral triangle or 120 degrees for a hexagon, double 60. All right, so that's how to inscribe a hexagon, a regular hexagon in a circle, okay? The last task here is to inscribe an equilateral triangle in a circle. And so we're going to do that task, but we're going to do it two ways. Okay? So I'm going to leave room here. Okay, so first we're going to mark the center of the circle. Okay? And I'm going to draw a circle. All right. Draw a circle height rear. I mean right here. Draw a circle right here. Okay. And I'm going to take my pencil and make a mark anywhere I like on the edge of the circle. And I'm going to mark off six equal radiuses all the way around the edge of the circle. Whoops. Okay. And here we go. Okay, and here we go. See if I get them exactly the same this time. Nope, there's still some overlap. Always some overlap. Okay, and this time instead of connecting all six, I'm going to connect every other one every other mark around the circle. There we go. There we go, equilateral triangle, okay? Now, in the lesson, they, bear, they bring out another method that, that another student came up with. Uh, and so let's go ahead and do that method as well. And then we'll kind of explain or talk about why they work. So draw a circle with a center. I mean, draw a circle with a center. Draw a circle, see the winter. All right. And what I'm going to start by doing is I'm going to use my straight edge to draw a diameter. So diameter is simply a line segment connecting two points on a circle 
but that line segment goes through the center of the circle diameter. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to keep my compass with the same setting. I'm going to put it on one of the intersection points. And I could just mark an equal distance on both sides. Okay, but what they have you do instead is draw uh, uh, three qu three quarters of a circle, or so far, so uh, so so far, uh, so that it intersects twice, and then draw a connect connect the intersection points. So we're going to connect the top diameter point where it intersects the circle with both of the other intersection points of the circle. Okay. And then they want us to talk a little bit about why this works. Just a little bit about why it works. There we go. Okay, and we can see that it is here. All right, basically the, the thought here is this. It works because if I continue around the circle and mark off equal radiuses, I end up getting the first construction. Okay? Because these intersect right here. Okay? So really it's just the same thing as the first construction with just a little bit uh, fewer marks. Right. Okay. Uh, and so that's that's that. All right. So I wanted to show you one more thing. The lesson did bring out that you can do the. the it is possible to do these constructions using construction software. Uh, the software we're going to use is GeoGebra, and it's GeoGebra.org/geometry. Uh, and uh, just want to show you some things now. It doesn't allow me to do partial circles, so I'm going to use the circle tool to draw a circle. Okay, I'm going to use the line tool to connect the center with a point on the edge. Okay, I'm going to use the point tool to put a point at the intersection of that diameter and the circle. Okay, now I'm going to do circle with a center, and I'm going to do that from B to a point beyond A, and the note by the way I'm doing the, the square, inscribing the square. Okay, and then what I want to use is the compass tool. The compass tool allows me to measure a radius, so D to B, and then drag a circle of that same radius anywhere I want. I'm going to put it on C. Okay, use the line tool to connect the two intersection points. Okay, and use the point tool to draw intersection points, and then use the segment tool, or the polygon tool actually, to click on all four points, and we've got our inscribed square. Okay, so it is possible to do the construction there. I want to show you real quick the hexagon construction here. Okay, so again I'm going to use the compass tool. Use the compass tool when you want to duplicate a circle. So A to B, right? Click on B, click on the intersection, click on the intersection, click on the intersection. It's really fast here. Click on the intersection. Notice how six circles fit all the way around. Click on the intersection. Creates kind of a flower pattern here. And we can, by drawing a polygon here, draw a regular inscribed hexagon. Okay, we can also draw a regular inscribed triangle, equilateral triangle. Okay. All right, so all these are possible here, though you don't have to do these for your portfolio. All right, so hopefully that helps. 
feel free to book a live lesson or look a live lesson if you need some help.